Friends, thanks for being here. Let's jump right into the message in the second week of preparation as we've been looking at the seasons that summer invites us into. So last week, we started this conversation and we began with prayer. And not just any prayer, but prayer specifically that reminds us uh, what makes us, as, as Exodus says, a distinct people that keeps us in connection with God and acknowledges our need and our dependence uh, upon God to lead us. So anytime we find ourselves walking in between in that that liminal space between one thing and another, looking ahead, preparing for a new season to come. Anytime there's a change on the horizon, we do well to dedicate ourselves to prayer and to re-up that life. And one way that we do that is remind ourselves of our dependence and of our need for God. So that's what we talked about this week. Uh, and remember last week, I talked about going to training camp for the chiefs. And I talked about the, the physical and the mental preparation and the relational pieces and, and all all that takes place in that sort of preparation. Well, there's another thing that happens as training camp unfolds. Uh, part of the purpose of getting all of those people together, it's not just to get the mind and the body uh, in shape. It's another thing that happens uh, that, that, that's less tangible. It's the, the setting of the vision, the imagining. So, so last year we put a slogan on it for the Chiefs, run it back. And I think there was such a bitter taste in the mouth of so many players. Everything I've, I've heard is said, you know what? We're not having a slogan this year. We're just going to bring the Lombardi home. Like that's it. And that's all we're focused on, winning games. But, but last year there was all this energy to, to that. And no matter whether you put a slogan to it or not, there is all this conversation about setting a vision, that envisioning and internalizing it, imagining and dreaming about the time that is ahead. And friends, that's what I want to talk about this week, that exact thing. After we do that work of opening ourselves up to God, of connecting with God and reminding ourselves that there's no place that we'd rather be than in God's presence, whether that's right here, back there or over there, that we want to be with God's presence and following God uh, wherever God would lead after we do all of that, we move into this process of dreaming, imagining, envisioning what might be next. And, and by the way, this isn't for me something that is disconnected from what we talked about uh, last week, uh, this request for God's presence. It's not like we do that in, in one phase and then we move on to the next thing. It's an ongoing part of what we do. Uh, we don't just acknowledge, check the box, and then move to something else in whatever direction we want. No, instead, all of this dreaming and envisioning, all of it is, is rooted in that process. It's a continuation of prayer. All of it is dependent upon God and happens in the presence and in conversation with God. That's what I would hope for all of us. Richard Foster, in his seminal work called The Celebration of Discipline, uh, describes uh, prayer as a practice that catapults us onto the frontier of the spiritual life. Real prayer, he says, is life-changing and life-creating. And friends, that's the kind of prayer that I want to talk about this morning that, that creates life, that it, uh, provides us vision and helps us to imagine things that we couldn't do on our own. So the scripture talks about this in so many ways. I went back and forth on which scripture to use this morning in the weeks leading up to it. But then a few weeks ago, we read uh, uh, the, the story from Joshua, and I knew immediately that I wanted to go uh, back to that. We were talking about celebration then, uh, back at the beginning of the month, but I knew that I wanted to come back here. So if you turn in your Bible to the beginning of Joshua, we'll be in chapter three. And let me just put it in context of where we've been these last few weeks. So last week we talked about uh, uh, Moses uh, talking with God about, uh, we want your presence to go with us. And, and God says, okay, I'll do that. What, what happens for the rest of Exodus is that uh, uh, the people are given all of these detailed instructions about how to build the tent of meeting. And it is this ornate, elaborate, beautiful. Uh, it's not even just a tent. It's this whole courtyard. It's this whole setup. And they also build the Ark of the Covenant, which is for the people, the very presence of God among them. And so all of this is ornate and beautiful, and it's also portable because this is a people on the move. And so then we fast forward several books and a generation and we come to Joshua, and that's where we pick it up now. And you'll remember, we read from Joshua, as I said, when we were in the celebrate part of this series, and, and there was, uh, they were crossing the Jordan into the promised land. 
and, and they, they moved the stones and those were reminders for them. What we're going to read is right before that in the story. So they've come right up to the edge of the Jordan River and there is this instruction about the Ark of the Covenant, which again is the very presence of God. And this is so important. By the way, do you see this, this recurring theme about acknowledging and understanding and keeping in mind the presence of God? If you're following along, let's start in verse one. Early in the morning, Joshua rose up and set out from Shittim with all of the Israelites and they came to the Jordan. So right here, they're camped on the edge before crossing over. Verse two, at the very end, at the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place. Follow it so that you may know the way that you should go for you have not passed this way before. Yet there shall be a space between you and the ark, a distance of about 2,000 cubits. Do not come any nearer to it than that. Then Joshua said to all of the people, sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. To the priests, Joshua said, take up the ark of the covenant and pass it in front of all the people. So they took the covenant, the ark of the covenant, and went in front of all of the people. May God have blessing to our reading and understanding of these words. So, so there is uh, all of this that happening. And I said this two weeks ago. I love the imagery of it. You can see sort of the importance of all of this. But the people have come right to the edge of getting ready to cross the Jordan, what we read a few weeks back in this miraculous, uh, the, the Jordan stopping and being able to, to, to cross on dry ground. And so all of that is about to happen. And in this moment, there comes this, this set of instructions. Now, if you've been around Common Grace, you may have heard this before. You may know that this is one of my very, very favorite scriptures because uh, after I, I've thought about something for about 15 seconds, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm a doer. I'm a mover. Uh, I don't sit still for too long. I, I want to go. I want to make things happen. I want action and I want it yesterday. If I could, I'd probably put the boat together while we were floating on the water. And the reason that I love this scripture is because there are these repeated reminders to keep the presence of God in your vision, in your eye, to keep that on the horizon and don't lose sight of it. Friends, it is so easy to lose sight of God's leading in our lives. Uh, we do it as communities. We do it as individuals. We do it in big ways. We do it in small ways. We do it in very self-centered ways. We do it in ways that harm other people. We do it in ways that we are very aware of, and we do it in ways that we have no idea that we do. I love this reminder to keep God's presence we might say to keep God's call, keep God's direction, keep God's leading. We could, we could voice that in so many different ways, but to keep God within our vision, don't stray, especially if you're going a place that you've never been. And by the way, leave that distance. I believe it's like a third of a mile. Leave that distance. So in case you get excited, in case you start moving quickly, you'll have enough time to remind yourself, slow down. Whoa, let's keep this on the horizon. I love this scripture. It's so important because we want to go, 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 go. But it's important that we keep God where God belongs, that we keep God in our vision, that we keep our call, that we keep the directives, that we keep the dreams that God gives us within our minds. And we need that especially anytime we move into a new season to keep our focus on God. So you know we're in this back to school season and I wonder if you can think about the last time you started a new grade a new school, or maybe a new job. Uh, we've had some folks at the church who have just started new jobs in this last couple of weeks. Uh, when, was, when was the last time that happened? And think about the process that went into that. And I actually want you to think about it for yourself, not for your children, but for yourself. The last time you did that, did you, did you buy new clothes? Or did you want particular clothes, but you didn't get them? Was there supplies that you had to get? Maybe there was even new shoes. Uh, maybe you had to find a new schedule, figure that out, figure out uh, how you were going to get there, find a parking place. 
Uh, what was the moment like when you met the, the new boss or you met your teacher? What was it like adjusting to that new schedule, understanding uh, what you were going to have in terms of, of work beyond the, the assigned hours, whether that was school or for work? And, and what was it like to, to do all of that, to, to figure out the, the character and the culture and the extracurriculars of the place where you were? What all goes into that? In that season of preparation, what are all the things you do before day one happens? All of that is a part of our process. Uh, But I wonder if when you did this, uh, did you also lay up at night and and think about the year ahead? I remember especially doing this as a child, like maybe you saw yourself uh, walking in the first day of school and like tripping right as you went in the front door. I actually had that vision when I was younger. That's no exaggeration. Or maybe you had a, a, a vision or a dream or a nightmare of dropping all your books right in the middle of passing period in the busiest intersection of the whole junior high or forgetting your locker combination. Uh, maybe it's this is all sort of the summer version of that finals dream uh, where you wake up and you realize that you've overslept uh, for that big final, that last test of your semester. I, I did all of that. You know, maybe that's why I became a doer. I don't know. I mean, there are times when we're entering a new season and we're, we're just, we're just anxious. We're uncertain. And all of it is sort of uh, shrouded in this, the whole process is shrouded in this uncertainty. And maybe that's what leads us to those kinds of dreams, those kinds of thoughts sometimes. But maybe there are other times where we're excited. We have great feelings. We anticipate that that something good is on the horizon, that something good is about to happen. And we know this is going to be beautiful and wonderful. So we have confidence. And perhaps we have even a little bit of vision about where we're going. Maybe that vision works out. Maybe it looks differently. But but that's a a better place to start. Or, Or we trust that even if we don't have vision, and even if we don't know exactly where we're going or exactly what we're doing, that there's going to be something good in it. And we have the tools and we have the resources to figure it out together. That's a much different experience from when we feel uncertain and anxious about all of it. So I was thinking... Uh, What does this look like for us to prepare, to imagine, to dream in in those moments? I mean, if instead of of having these dreams about tripping and these sort of nightmares or envisioning all the things that could go wrong, what if instead we imagined good and beautiful things? When we were in a season of preparation in this liminal space, walking in between any time of our life, what if we imagined the good and wonderful things? What if we imagined what it might look like if this was our dream job? or if this year was the best year yet. It's what the the chiefs do during training camp when they set expectations and a vision and they imagine themselves going all the way into the playoffs. What that might that look like for us as common grace in this season? If we were to dream and envision and imagine what is to come and imagine good and beautiful and wonderful things, what does that look like for us as a faith community? So I've been thinking about it these last few weeks. Like, like, like what if we found somebody who was looking for the same sort of things we were in a community? Uh, what if a friend that we have that we've been praying for for a long time, for whatever reason, took an invitation to come to an event or to church and we were like, what? <laughs> what if our children connected with friends and made connections in their faith? Uh, What if our own faith grows in a way that that we may or may not have even dared to dream or imagine or think was still possible? What if we go crazy and get involved in a small group and it actually makes a difference in our lives? What if we find new ways to get involved, like find ways to do life with other people? What if we're engaged and involved in worship in ways that we never have been before? What if maybe we made church accessible to someone that we've, we've never met before? And some of these things, all of these sort of uh, uh, visions happen for them, or some of them happen for them. And all of a sudden, we remember why all the work was worthwhile in the first place. And we remembered what we were about. Friends, what if we imagined good and beautiful things in the context of our faith community? For you, what would that look like? Not just getting by, not like, thank goodness, we're back to in-person worship. But what would it look like to have a dream or a prayer answered? 
And can we envision that? Can we see that? So what if we take time this week, having confessed our need and our reliance upon God and our desire for God's leading and God's presence? What if we sort of put uh, all of that, uh, confessing all of that, and then put energy into envisioning uh, God's goodness ahead of us? What if in this season of preparation, we started asking for and imagining God-shaped dreams that can be specific, like things that we've, we've already listed as we've talked about, or they can, they can be much more ambiguous, maybe simply to recognize God's movement in our life or our community like we never have before. Friends, as we enter into seasons of transition, of going into something new, we'll find ourselves in, in different places, in different spirits, in, in, in different uh, um, levels of anxiety or joy at different times. There's probably moments where we find ourselves in excitement or uncertainty and gratitude or grief. You, you, could, you could go on and on. So I said this two weeks ago, but, but I don't know where everybody's at related to, to common grace. And, and I don't know where you're at related to whatever new seasons are, are happening right now or are on the horizon in, in your life. Whatever you're feeling, I'm not asking you to suspend it, whether it's joy or, or anxiety, frustration or hope. I'm not asking you to put it on hold. In fact, I want you to bring it. I want you to name it. I want you to lift it in prayer. In any season of transition, don't stuff it. Don't hide it. Give voice to it. Offer it to God. And then keep going. Keep your eyes fixed on the God who leads us. Keep the dream and the vision and the plan. Keep the reminder of the presence of God. Uh, Keep the call of God on the horizon. Keep it in focus and in your vision and let that be your guide. For us as a community, I want us to have that vision to dream big God-shaped dreams. Uh, Not for things that puff puff, puff us up or make us stronger or, or give us comfort, but for things that would bring God's kingdom about and God's hopes and vision for the world in our midst. Uh, I hope over the next week that we'll catch a vision uh, that that we ourselves could not ask for, that, that, that this ties into last week, that when we recognize this dependence on God, that we catch a vision for things beyond our own capacity and say, this is only gonna happen if God leads us to it. That's what I hope for this week, that we would get some picture, some vision, and keep our eyes locked on that, on God's leading in the season that is to come. So friends, will you dream with me this week? Will you enter into that process as we pray together through this season? Will you imagine what wonderful things might come to mind? That's what this week is all about, continuing in that season of prayer, marching through our lives in a season, uh, in this season of preparation, that we might ask God for dreams and vision and leading, continuing to reiterate our need for God and God's Spirit, and figure out what it means to keep God on the horizon as we move forward in this season and every season. Let's continue praying together this week. I wanna end with this scripture from the letter to the churches in Ephesus, which is all about connection and strength and vision and unity in God's church. And I want you to receive this blessing. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints, what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I love that as we talk about what we can imagine, but listen, listen to this last part of the blessing and receive this, friends. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we could ever ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen.